When trying to contain a rising epidemic, time and information are priceless commodities. Working with data about travel patterns, University of Michigan researchers are creating a new mathematical model that may help slow down the spread of an epidemic. When an epidemic happens, how you're going to react to that, or even before it happens, how you're going to prevent that is an uh, important question. Do you want to close this facility or not closing this facility? Now, what's the consequences of closing that facility? Specifically, we build models for cities. That's because um, people have more interactions in cities, there are more people living in the cities, and there are more uh, diversity of population in the cities. And that's why it makes the uh, making the right decision hard, and that's why we think uh, having a mathematical model is quite necessary. Ideally, at the beginning of an epidemic, you want everyone to go home, stay home, and not interact with anyone else until the contamination phase ends. So if you close the, the locations that they, they would like to go the most, they would choose the second one they, uh, in their priority list and go there. If your solution, after you decide to close all the facility, you realize that the people will all jam into one facility, then that's not a good idea because you tend to have uh, more interactions between people. So the beginning of this project is actually initiated from a collaboration I have with uh, scientists in Sandia National Lab. They find out some very interesting patterns of people traveling to different locations and we were thinking which part of the, the social life that patterns will affect. Using the Sandia National Lab's supply of 100 online profiles and travel patterns between 195 locations within the city of Portland, Oregon, Michigan researchers have now figured into their model this travel behavior, which Assistant Professor Shen says is seldom introduced into other dynamic epidemic strategies. So we count the number of the times that they travel to each of the 195 locations. Is this person going to facility one or going to facility two, so and so forth, up to facility 195? Do I close this facility or not closing the facility? Then you will make a decision of zero or one. So we use these binary variables to pass the information to how many people eventually will go into different type of facilities which are not currently being closed and then we use that to calculate what's the probability that each person will get sick if assuming that there is a sick person in that facility. We think we can use that data to solve some of the critical questions people are trying to answer here is that how much budget like the government should put in the prevention phase versus how much they should put in the intervention phase. There are a lot of different types of epidemics going on in the world right now and we have more and more interactions between people. If you want to do experiments, and you have to try maybe thousands of times experiments, which cost you a lot, uh, if you can just let the model tell you what's the optimal solution, I think that would save a lot of time in experiments and also money. One of the key things is to make them safer for a wider range of occupants. Small children, people who are sitting in the rear seat, people who are sitting in the front seat, and the focus of this study are older senior population.